Good morning everyone! Welcome to the new normal class of practical research. I am your teacher, Romel Palado. Today's topic is all about the nature of inquiry and research. This topic composed of two lessons. First, nature of inquiry. And second, nature of research. But before that, may I present to you first our objectives for today's discussion. First, at the end of this discussion, you should be able to differentiate inquiry and research. Second, determine the foundation of inquiry. Third, enumerate the benefits of inquiry-based learning. Fourth, discuss the characteristics of research. Fifth, classify research based on a set criteria. And lastly, differentiate the various types of research. Before we are going to proceed to the lesson 1, let us first differentiate the two terms, inquiry and research. These terms are almost the same in meaning. If both involve investigative work in which you seek information about something by searching or examining the object of your research. But, inquiry is to look for the information by asking various questions about the thing you are curious about while research is to discover truths by investigating on your own chosen topic scientifically, meaning by going through a systematic way of doing things wherein you are to begin from the simplest to the most complex modes patterns of thinking. Lesson 1 talks about the nature of inquiry. Let us first define what is inquiry. Inquiry is a learning process that motivates you to obtain knowledge or information about people, things, races, or events. Once you are curious about something, you are going to inquire or ask some questions in order to gather data or information. In short, it requires you to collect data, meaning facts and information. The second definition, inquiry is a problem-solving technique. Solving a problem by being inquisitive, you are going to find the solution to a given problem. Inquiry elevates your thinking power. Inquisitive thinking allows you to shift from one level to another. According to Badki 2012, inquiry is a problem-solving technique that includes cooperative learning. There are three governing principles or foundation of inquiry. First, John Dewey's theory connected experiences for exploratory and reflective thinking. The first picture shows the image of John Dewey. The second one shows the experiential learning cycle. Through experiences, you will be able to share and process through discussing the patterns and dynamics of your experience. After that, you are going to generalize by developing real-world principles. Then, you are going to apply by effective use of learning or experiences. In short, John Dewey's theory is all about learning through experiences by reflecting to it. Second governing principle is live by Gotsky's zone proximal development scaffolding of learning. That is Lee Vygotsky. Zone of proximal development, things can shall do with a bit of help or scaffolding, such as when prompted with leading questions or watching an example setter. This is the space where learning and growth occur. As you can see on the picture, the yellow one, the learners here, can do the activity yet. He needs the help of others, and that the green occurs, the ZPD. After helping him or her, he can do now the activity without your help. That is Lee Vygotsky's Zone Proximal Development. In short, learning through the help of others. Lastly, Jerome Brunner's theory, learners varied world perceptions for their own interpretative thinking. There are three learning modes according to him. First, inactive, second, iconic, and lastly, symbolic. Every learners must start in inactive. Learners 
learn through movement or action. Second, learners learn through images or icons. Lastly, the learners learn through abstract symbols. They will be able to read and write. That is according to Jerome Brunner. To sum it up, the three governing principles or foundations of inquiry, John Dewey is learning through experiences, through reflecting to it. Then, Levi Gotsky is learning through the help of others. Lastly, Jerome Brunner's theory is learning through your interpretation. The three governing principles or foundation of inquiry talks about inquiry as a way of learning. Then, changing knowledge, it develops your creativity and subjectivity. It also develops your sociocultural factors through questioning or communicating others. It also develops your sensory experience. And lastly, it develops your higher order thinking skills through making questions. What are the benefits of inquiry-based learning? First, it elevates interpretative thinking through graphic skills. Second, it improves student learning abilities. Third, it widens learners' vocabulary. Fourth, it facilitates problem-solving acts. Fifth, increases social awareness and cultural knowledge. Six, encourages cooperative learning. Seven, provides of mastery of procedural knowledge. And lastly, it encourages hats. Lesson two, nature of research involves meaning of research, characteristics of research, purposes of research, types of research, and approaches to research. Let us first define what is research. Research is a process of executing various mental acts for discovering and examining facts and information to prove the accuracy or truthfulness of your claims or conclusions about the topic of your research. Another definition, research is analogous to inquiry in that both involve investigation of something through questioning. But in research needs to discover truths by investigating on your own chosen topic through scientifically. Meaning you are going to have a systematic way of approach through simplest form to most complex modes of patterns of thinking. What are the characteristics of a good research? First, accuracy. It must give correct or accurate data. Second, objectiveness. It must deal with facts and not with merely opinion. Third, timeliness. It must be fresh and interesting to the society. Fourth, relevance. Its topic must be instrumental in improving society. Fifth, Clarity. Simple, direct, concise, and correct language must be used. Lastly, it should be systematic or it must be organized. What should be the purposes of doing research? Or what should be your motive in doing research? First, you should learn how to work independently. Second, learn how to work systematically. Third, have in-depth knowledge of something. Fourth, evaluate your mental abilities. Fifth, improve your reading and writing skills. Sixth, be familiar with the basic tools of research. And lastly, you should free yourself. There are three types of research. First, based on application method. Second, based on purpose of the research. Third, based on types of data needed. 
based on application method, if it deals with concepts, principles, or abstract things, it is pure research. But if you apply your chosen research to social problems or issue, finding ways to make positive changes in, so in society, you call it applied research. So under the category of based on application methods, there are two, pure research and applied research. The second type of research is based on purpose of the research. Under to it is descriptive research. It aims at defining or giving a verbal portrayal or picture of a person, thing, event, group, situation, and etc. We also have correlational research. It shows relationships or connectedness of two factors, circumstances, or agents called variables that affect the research. The third one, explanatory research. This type of research elaborates or explains not just the reasons behind the relationship of two factors, but also ways by which such relationship exists. The fourth, we have exploratory research. An exploratory research purpose is to find out how reasonable or possible it is to conduct a research study on a certain topic. Fifth, action research. This type of research studies an ongoing practice of a school, organization, community, or institution for the purpose of obtaining results that will bring improvements in the system. The third types of research is based on types of data needed. There are qualitative research that requires non-numerical data which means that the research uses words rather than numbers to express the results the inquiry or investigation about people's thoughts, beliefs, feelings, views, and lifestyles regarding the object of the study. On the other hand, quantitative research involves measurement of data. It involves numerical data. What are the data needed? We have first primary data. Primary data are obtained through direct observation or contact with people, objects, artifacts, paintings, and etc. We also have secondary data. These are data that have already been written about or reported on and are available for reading purposes. What are the approaches to research? We have scientific or positive approach in which you are you discover and measure information as well as observe and control variables in an impersonal manner. Second, we have naturalistic approach. In contrast to the scientific approach that uses numbers to express data, the naturalistic approach uses words. And the third one is triangulation approach, combining the first two approaches. That is according to Badke 2012 and Silverman on 2013. To sum it up our topic for today, what is the difference between inquiry and research? Inquiry is to look for information by asking questions while research involves investigation scientifically. When we talk about scientifically, it involves systematically from simplest form to complex form. What are the foundations of inquiry? We have three. First, we have John Dewey's theory, experiences for exploratory and reflective thinking, learning through experiences by reflecting to it. Second, Liv Vygotsky's ZPD or Zone Proximal Development, learning through others or scaffolding. Third, Jerome Brunner's theory, interpretative thinking or learning through your interpretation. Enumerate the benefits of inquiry. 
We have elevates interpretative thinking through graphic skills. It improves students' learning abilities, widens learners' vocabulary, facilitates problem-solving acts, increases social awareness and cultural knowledge, encourages cooperative learning, provides a mastery of procedural knowledge, and encourages hats. What are the characteristics of a good research? It must be accuracy, objectiveness, timeliness, relevance, clarity, and systematic. What are the types of research we have based on application method, based on purpose method, and based on types of data needed? Under based on application method, we have applied research and pure research. Under based on purpose method, we have descriptive research, correlational research, explanatory research, exploratory research, and action research. Under based on types of data needed, we have qualitative research and quantitative research. Thank you. If you have clarifications and questions, you may ask me or call me or contact me to my cell phone number 0930-680-829 or you may log in to your e-learning or you may direct to this link. Thank you for tuning in everyone. God bless.